Welcome to our guide on mastering project scheduling for new engineers. We're glad you've chosen to embark on this educational journey with us. In this video, we'll be walking you through the steps of creating a comprehensive and realistic plan for project execution using P6 and the Bill of Quantities. From understanding the importance of preparation, engaging in preliminary discussions, to building a robust schedule and allocating resources wisely, each step has been designed to equip you with the necessary skills to manage projects efficiently. We will also delve into how to ensure continuous improvement and control throughout the project. We hope this guide will serve as a practical tool for you to excel in your engineering career. So let's dive straight in with the first phase, the preparation phase. We start with the preparation phase, which involves gathering all necessary information in P6, including contract documents, project drawings, and the bill of quantities. The aim here is to lay a solid foundation for your schedule in P6. Now that we have all the necessary information gathered, it's time to explore the various construction scheduling methods we could employ. Remember, choosing the right method can significantly influence the success of your project's completion. First off, we have the Critical Path Method, or CPM. This project management technique focuses on estimating the minimum project duration and determining the amount of scheduling flexibility needed. Next, we have the Program Evaluation and Review Technique, or PERT. This technique helps estimate project duration, identify possible risks, and estimate the durations of each activity. The Line of Balance, or LOB, is another useful technique. It looks at productivity rates and crews associated with specific scopes of work. Queue scheduling, also known as quantitative or queue scheduling, uses bar charts to schedule the materials and equipment needed on a project. Resource-oriented scheduling involves identifying the resources available for a project and managing situations in which multiple parties will need access to those resources simultaneously. The last planner system, or LPS, is a simple calculation focused on planning and coordinating work at the smallest possible increment. And finally, we have the Gantt chart. This is a visual representation of a project's timeline within a calendar. Each scheduling method offers its unique advantages and disadvantages. It is crucial to choose wisely based on your project's needs and the information you've gathered in the preparation phase. In the next scene, We'll delve into preliminary discussions with key stakeholders to better understand the project's goals, deadlines, and potential risks. Before we dive into preliminary discussions, it's important to understand how you can visualize your construction schedule. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words. There are several types of visual aids you can use to better comprehend and manage your project. The first is the Gantt chart. This is a calendar-based representation of your project plan. It's great for tracking project deadlines and managing overlapping tasks. However, be mindful, as large volumes of activities can make the chart quite complex. You'll need to group, sort, and filter information effectively. Next, we have network diagrams. These are detailed graphical representations of your project plan, illustrating job logic and activity sequencing. They provide a big picture view and are an excellent tool for catching any inconsistencies or errors. On the other hand, they can be time consuming to create and may become overly complex for larger projects. Time scaled logic diagrams or TSLDs offer a snapshot of your project plan. They condense the activities displayed in a Gantt chart into a format that displays the entire schedule and the chain of activities driving the schedule. These diagrams are useful, but they require substantial effort to modify and update. Finally, we have 3D models with scheduling data, also known as BIM4D. These simulations integrate detailed schedules with building information models, allowing stakeholders to track work in progress, analyze productivity, and proactively detect potential delays. They are a great tool for improving field production, but they can be difficult to maintain accurately across project teams due to the ever-changing nature of models, activities, and other scheduled data. Remember, the right visualization tool for your project depends on your specific needs and circumstances. Choose wisely and make sure your stakeholders have a clear understanding of your project timeline and tasks. Now let's move on to the schedule preparation, starting with our preliminary discussions. The next step is to engage in preliminary discussions with key stakeholders. This helps in understanding the project's goals, deadlines, and potential risks. 
and allows you to define the project start and completion dates in P6. Now we transition to building the schedule in P6. It all begins with the work breakdown structure or WBS. This step involves breaking down the project into manageable pieces within P6, from major project phases to specific tasks within each phase. Following this, we identify and sequence tasks in P6. This involves defining individual activities and their order, reflecting dependencies between tasks established through predecessors and successors in P6. Next, we estimate durations for each task in P6. This requires considering factors like complexity, resource availability, industry standards, and bill of quantities. Estimating durations accurately in P6 helps keep your project on track. In this part, we will delve deeper into key scheduling concepts that will help you to manage your construction project effectively. First off, we have project milestones, which are visual markers of significant starts or finishes of events in your project plan. These could include the procurement of critical materials, the completion of a project phase, or the attainment of necessary permits. Next, we consider duration, the accurate estimate of how long an activity will take. It's crucial to remember that these estimates should be as realistic as possible to keep the project on track. Dependencies are another essential aspect of scheduling. They represent the relationships or logical ties connecting various project activities. Understanding dependencies helps in determining the sequence of tasks. We also look at lead time and lag time. Lead time refers to the time it takes for critical materials or equipment to arrive on the project site. Lag time, on the other hand, is the positive or negative duration tied to a relationship or logical tie between two work activities. Float is a calculated value, an amount of time that a scheduled activity can be delayed without delaying the start date of any subsequent activity. Resource allocation is the process of determining the resources needed for a project and the timeline for completing each project task, considering the availability of those resources. Finally, we have the baseline schedule, which is the approved version of a schedule model. This schedule remains constant and serves as a point of comparison to actual results, keeping construction project managers on target. Understanding these terms and concepts will provide you with a solid foundation for building effective schedules and managing your construction project successfully. Milestones are another crucial part of the scheduling process in P6. They represent significant achievements in the project, like permit approvals or completion of major phases, defined as milestones within P6. The next step is resource allocation in P6, where we determine the resource needs for each task, including manpower, equipment, and materials. The bill of quantities can be a great help here. Finally, we review and approve the schedule in P6, which serves as the final baseline, incorporating stakeholder feedback and necessary revisions. Remember, a good schedule in P6 is not set in stone. It needs flexibility to accommodate unforeseen circumstances. Regular communication and updates in P6 are key, and leveraging P6's functionalities can make the process easier. Once you have a baseline schedule in P6, project controls become crucial for successful project execution. Regularly compare actual progress against the baseline schedule in P6, Update the project schedule in P6 based on progress updates. Utilize P6's EVM capabilities to track project performance. Use P6's risk management tools and generate reports from P6 for informed decision making. Lastly, always strive for continuous improvement. Learn from experienced schedulers, attend training on P6 and utilize online resources. By following these steps and incorporating bill of quantities data into your P6 schedule, you'll create a comprehensive and realistic plan for project execution. A well-crafted schedule in P6 is a dynamic tool that, when properly managed, leads to successful project completion. So, take these steps to heart and conquer your next project with confidence.